During World War II, one of Germany's big objectives was to starve Britain into submission by disrupting the flow of vital supplies being shipped across the Atlantic Ocean, and because they didn't have many big battleships, they instead relied on a fleet of submarines called undersea boats, better known to you and me as U-boats. These silent killers would cruise unseen beneath the waves, hunting in packs, just waiting for their chance to pounce on vulnerable cargo ships. They soon became every sailor's worst nightmare. If you were really lucky, you might just spot the torpedo tracks in time to take evasive action, and if not, well, you were in for a long swim home. For obvious reasons, U-boats and their crews were generally depicted as the antagonists in countless war movies and TV shows over the years. Evil, cowardly enemies who refused to fight fair and always got what they deserved in the end. But in 1981, a young German director named Wolfgang Peterson had a cool little idea. Wouldn't it be interesting to show the war from their point of view for once? And so we come to Das Boat, a six-part miniseries about the wartime exploits and hardships of a German submarine crew out on patrol in the Atlantic. And what a fucking series it is! Das Boat is a fantastic cinematic achievement, delivering some amazingly tense and gripping combat sequences and a surprisingly balanced, nuanced and poignant depiction of German fighting men doing a job that nobody particularly envied. The series had a big ensemble cast, with different episodes focusing more on certain characters depending on what was happening, but generally the actions viewed through the eyes of Lieutenant Werner, a German war correspondent assigned to U-96 with a batch of young replacements. Pretty quickly, you can tell there's real animosity between the new recruits and the veteran sailors. They're like a tight-knit group of friends who don't want to let anyone else in, and it soon leads to trouble. Anyway, after a bit of fucking around, literally at a French brothel, the ship heads out into the Atlantic to start its patrol. The series features all the familiar tropes of your typical submarine movie. Depth charges, desperate blockade runs, mechanical failures and accidents, storms and natural hazards, and emergency dives beyond the ship's crush depth. It's all present and correct, but the difference here is in the execution. There's a level of gritty realism that you don't often get in films like this. The claustrophobic interiors of the ship have been faithfully recreated, to the point where it genuinely looks like they're on a real U-boat. Apparently, an actual German submarine commander from the war acted as a technical consultant on the production, so needless to say, it's pretty authentic looking. And it makes the action sequences even more tense and impactful, as electrics short out, water pours in, and the crew desperately scrambles to keep their ailing ship afloat. The cast really adds to the believability as well. There's none of your usual handsome Hollywood stars here. These guys look like real average men who would have actually done work like this, and there's definitely no attempt to glamorise their situation. Life aboard ship involves long periods of boredom and tedious work, punctuated by bursts of frantic action and absolute terror, and the series doesn't hold back on the mental and physical toll it takes on the crew. Everyone is exhausted, filthy and unwashed after weeks at sea, covered in engine oil and sweat and god knows what else. And it's really hammered home when the crew are invited to a lavish dinner aboard a German merchant ship, and they look like they just stepped out of a World War I battlefield. The series also doesn't shy away from the difficult moral choices that crews like this were often forced to make. Like when the captain orders them to leave enemy sailors to die in the water after sinking their ship, despite protests from Werner. But as the man rightly points out, there's no way to feed and house so many prisoners, so what the hell are they supposed to do with them? It's little tragedies like this which underscore just how harsh and unforgiving the war at sea really was. And it's not like there's some triumphant ending where all their hardships and sacrifices are vindicated. When the ship finally limps back into port after its long patrol, they're greeted as heroes, but none of the crew look or feel like it. They're simply survivors, permanently changed by their experiences and grateful just to be alive. And ironically, it's only when they reach the apparent safety of their home port that the war at last catches up to them. Germany wasn't exactly known for big, ambitious productions like this, so it's nothing short of a miracle that Das Boat even got made, or that it genuinely holds up against the best that Hollywood could produce at the time. The cinematography, performances and soundtrack are all spot on, and for the most part, it's aged really well. There's been a whole bunch of different versions released over the years, including a cut-down version that was turned into a movie, and even an English dub that's actually pretty good. But honestly, if you want the best viewing experience, 
experience, then I recommend you get the original six episode series in German with subtitles. Yeah, you're gonna have to pay a bit more attention, but it's absolutely worth it to get the proper dialogue and the full narrative just as it was intended. Das Boot is kind of a rare beast when I think about it. A distinctly German production, retelling the war from a German perspective, and providing a very different point of view in the process. It mostly stays away from the politics of the war, and I think it's completely right to do so. In fact, if anything, many of the characters are vocally critical of Hitler and the Nazis. This isn't a story about the ideology or the leaders that propelled them into the war, but rather the average men who actually had to fight it. Men who did their jobs as best they could, looked out for each other, grieved for lost friends, and hoped only to make it out alive at the end. And no matter which perspective you tell it from, there's something truly universal in that. Das Boot is a great reminder that there's two sides to every conflict, and that the enemy you find it so easy to despise may not be all that different from you after all. And maybe that's a reminder we all need from time to time. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.